Alrighty, we finished chapter three with subsection 3.4, which is just looking at other units for solution concentrations. Not a very big section at all, okay? And by far, right, from chapter three, make sure you know how to work with molarity. That's the one we will use the most often okay, by a long shot. But there are other units for expressing concentrations that you should have on your radar as well. And that's what we'll look at in this video. Okay, molarity, right, useful for concentrations. We've established that already. Okay. But depending on our application, we might see some others. Mass percentage is the first one. Okay. And this would probably be the next most frequent after molarity. Okay. So, what is mass percentage? Right. You can probably get it right from the name the percentage by mass. Okay, so it's the mass of the component. So typically looking at a solute there over the mass of the solution multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. Okay. And you could do the mass percentage of the solvent as well. It's just not nearly as common. Okay. So you heard, already heard me use percent mass, right? Mass percentage, percent mass, percent weight, weight, weight percent, WW percent, all mean the same thing. Mass over mass times 100, part over whole times 100. Where do you see that most commonly? Consumer products. We look at bleach, for example. Right, if you look on the size, we'll say 7.4% sodium hypochlorite. That happens to be a percentage by mass. Okay. And you'll see this you know, a handful of times throughout the semester. So I have added an example problem in here in 3.4. Example D, okay, which gives us a solution of HCl and asked about the mass in half a liter of the solution given the density and the mass percent, right? That's 37.2% is percent by mass. So I recommend you pause the video and try that one out. You have to first convert that half a liter into a mass unit, I'm using the density, take it to grams, then use the mass percentage to solve for the final answer. I do have a separate video showing how that one is solved, final answer of 221 grams. Okay, so that's mass percent. Pretty easy. We also have volume percent. It's the same thing, except where mass percent is mass over mass, volume percent is used as volume over volume. Okay, also represented as percent volume or VV percent. You might use it in your career path. We really won't use it at all in general chemistry. The only common thing where you might run into it is ABV of a drink, alcohol by volume. Right? That's how many milliliters of ethanol are in 100 milliliters of the solution, the drink, at 20 degrees Celsius. That's ABV. So that's all for volume volume percentage. There's also mass volume percentage, or mass volume percent, all right, which is a ratio of the mass of the solute to the solution's volume, Okay, because otherwise it would just be density if you didn't differentiate between the two. And this one, we don't use a ton in Gen Chem, but it is used all the time in the medical profession. Yeah. But the reason it's not just a set standard is because it's just a mass over a volume. You can use different units there, depending on what your application is. Okay. So in the medical field, if you have a saline solution, uh, that's an example down here on the bottom, right? 0.9% saline is mass over volume grams per 100 milliliters of solution, for example. Okay. Two other applications, right? Medical field, you'll see it all the time. If that's your chosen career path. We just don't use it a ton in Gen Chem. Mass percent, more common. Molarity, way more common. But what we will use a couple of times at the end of the section here are parts per million or parts per billion, which are represented as PPM or PPB. And this is what we use for very low concentrations, right? In environmental chemistry or analytical chemistry, looking at contaminants or pollutants. Yep, okay? so low solute concentrations. And people kind of freak out with PPM or PPB, but they're not difficult to do. Just compare them to percentages, right? A percent is out of 100, a PPM is out of a million, a PPB is out of a billion. And just note that, right, PPM, PPB, they're unitless quantities. So that means that the units that are in the numerator and the denominator have to be the same, right? Grams over grams or kilograms over kilograms, for example. 
Okay, and then it's just solute over solution, PPM out of a million. So we multiply by a million over here, 10 to the sixth. PPB, we multiply by a billion, 10 to the ninth. And everything that I just said verbally on the previous slide is shown here, right? As long as you've got that fundamentally down, then you will be fine to work with PPM and PPB. The final slide from chapter three here, example 3.5, is a PPB question, okay? We're asked about finding the mass of lead in a glass of water with a concentration of 15 PPB. So you hope that isn't very high, right? Because that can be a neurotoxin, lead. So here, right, what do we do? We have to take that 300 milliliters, convert it to grams, solve for how many grams of lead we have first, and then convert it to micrograms, just because this question happens to ask for micrograms. So it'll test your metric prefixes again from chapter one. Again, there's a video up on Blackboard showing how this problem is solved. Okay. You should get a final answer here of 4.5 micrograms of lead with those conditions, making sure you check your sig figs throughout these problems. Okay. So those are the other units for solution concentrations. Here in 3.4, I would say the PPM, PPB, and the mass percentages are the most important, okay, but they both pale in comparison to molarity. We'll use that the most, so make sure you're good with using molarity, then study up on PPM, PPB, mass percent, and if you're going into the medical field, mass volume percent.